the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Day for a Wednesday, November the 16th, 2022. Thanks for checking us out on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Yes, the Tie Cats season may be over, but the CFL season is not. As uh, both the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Toronto Argonauts are in Saskatchewan getting set for the 109th Grey Cup. And that's happening Sunday night. And I uh, can't wait for that game. And uh, that game, of course, on TSN. And uh, the man with the call is the CFL and TSN's Glenn Suter, who will be by in just a couple of moments. And in fact, it's a big week for our friend Glenn, as uh, not only is he going to be on the call, not only is the game back in Saskatchewan, where he had so much success as a CFL player, but on Sunday morning at the Football Reporters of Canada breakfast uh, that happens every year uh, that our friend Steve Milton will be at, uh, he's going to be inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in the reporter and uh, media wing. Uh, so well-earned for for our friend Glenn, well-deserved, and uh, we'll talk to him about that. We'll also get set for uh, that game on Sunday, and uh, we'll get his thoughts on the uh, the news earlier this week uh, that the Ticats uh, have acquired... Uh, the rights to Bo Levi Mitchell ahead of him becoming a free agent in February. So, uh, yeah, lots uh, lots still to get to this season, and uh, we'll be here for the rest of the week. Uh, but today at the uh, at the Great Cup, it was the coaches press conference, and a pretty interesting thing happened today in the sense that something didn't happen. Uh, yeah, the uh, the CFL. Traditionally, the coaches' press conference. There's traditionally a uh, a sex question that's asked, and uh, it goes back years. But uh, basically, uh, it's a question that's asked by the press on whether or not he lets his players have sex before the game. Uh, and this year, it was not asked. And uh, Derek Taylor had a good response to this. Uh, he said, "Quote: So proud to see that reporters today didn't lead with this nonsense." On one level, the question presumes that women are prey and players are predators, unable to focus on their most important work week because of their basic instincts. It's offensive and good riddance. So, yeah, there it goes. The uh, the sex question at the coach's press conference is uh, apparently no more, as uh, it was not asked today at the coach's press conference. You go to CFL.ca to hear both from Mike O'Shea and uh, Ryan Din Witty. All right, uh, let's get to our guest, though. Our guest today is the CFL and TSN's Glenn Suter. And uh, Suits, I, I know Saskatchewan, uh, Regina, has a special place in your heart. Uh, what does it mean to see the Grey Cup back at uh, in Saskatchewan Mosaic Stadium this week? Yeah, it's it is it's excellent. And you know, I think when the when the Riders were knocked out of the uh, out of the playoffs, there was a period of mourning, I'll say, because <laughs> they love their team and there's so much passion for their team in this province, as you know, you know, much like Hamilton. But um, they, you know, they had to go through a little bit of frustration and they were upset for a week or two. But everyone I'm talking to now, I'm walking. It's hard to walk through the mall, which is attached to our hotel, without talking football with every single fan <laughs> along the way. And I, I think the buzz is starting to slowly get uh, turned up a notch here. The hotels are full and, uh, you know, people are starting to come in. So they're going to do I, I have no doubt that the province of Saskatchewan will put on a fantastic, uh, you know, week of partying that will culminate in a great matchup and a great game because the CFL continues to deliver. Well, it's, it's easy to forget that last year we were still, you know, going through some restrictions and, and, you know, the party wasn't what it used to be or what we came to expect. Uh, despite the the great work that the, the Hamilton Tiger Cats organization did in putting on the show. Uh, but is there a sense of normalcy? I mean, we've, we've used that word quite a bit over the last few years, but I mean, like, like you just put out there, is there, is there some normalcy to this whole thing? Yeah, there is. I mean, the you know, when it comes to the pandemic, and again, you know, I go back to last year's Great Cup into overtime after having no training camp and no, you know, so very, like, amazing that the players put on that type of game and entertained at that level, um, you know, in a really weird time and different season and no camps, no preseason, all that. But yeah, I think it is back to normal here as as close to normal 
before the pandemic as we can get. There, there are still, you know, people, and I'm one of them, quite frankly, that, that wear a mask on a plane. I know that has sort of gone by the wayside a ton, but I, I just do it because I'm calling it on Sunday. So I'm being <laughs> extra careful. Yeah. So, you know, just, you know, I've got another five days to go before I call a big game and uh, with Rod Smith and I, I don't want to get a catch a cold knock on wood. So, you know, it's, but you walk around the streets, you go into restaurants, you go into bars, they're jam packed and no one's wearing masks or anything like that. So that's as close to normal as we yeah. get. Um, we'll talk about the game, but uh, the Thai Cats stealing the headlines to kick off Grey Cup week, uh, acquiring the rights, basically getting a little bit of a, a larger window to try and work out a deal with Bo Levi Mitchell. What was your initial reaction to the, the trade? Well, I, I good on good on Hamilton for doing it. Um, you know, I, I really feel like uh, it's worth a third round draft pick to have the exclusive negotiation rights and a chance to let's be honest, sell Bo Levi Mitchell that this is a good fit in Hamilton, and you have now sort of exclusive two and a half three months to do that. Um, you know, if you don't, you're you're calling him possibly he's getting closer to free agency. You know, you got to make this deal to get those rights to talk to him, mm -hmm. sell him on your team, sell him on your coaching staff, sell him on your plan. Um, you know, I know there's going to be other teams that are interested. Saskatchewan is one of them and they're going to be hoping that Hamilton can't sell Bo and that he does go into free agency and then they'll take a look. I, I think in Bo's position, he could wait still for free agency and be patient and listen to what Hamilton has to say. And for a third round draft pick, I know that's a heavy price to pay. That could be a star receiver, yeah. but for, for a third round pick to get two months to really talk to Bo and have him in your building, if you want, and, and the chance to sell him, I think was worth the trade for sure. I think there's, there's one thing people have asked me is like, Oh, what do you think about how much does he have left in the tank? I think it's easy to forget that Zach Caleros who's going for a third straight Grey cup is 34 years old. Bo Levi Mitchell is 32 years old. And, and this is a league where quarterbacks continue to play well into their thirties. I, I have to, I'm going to take a guess here at uh, suits and, and think you don't have any concern that, uh, that there, Bo Levi Mitchell doesn't have anything left in the gas tank. Not at all. Not at all. I think he has two, three, maybe even four years left in him if he wants to play that long. Uh, you know, he's he's continually getting other options outside of the game. And as that continues to grow again, he'll join our TSN crew for Great Cup coverage. I think he comes in today or tomorrow. So, you know, we will we'll talk to him and try to get information out of him, too, by the way. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. But you know what? I, I he has lots left in the tank. I think of Henry Burris near the end of his career and then he goes to Ottawa and everyone said ah he's done he's he's you know he's an old guy and he goes and wins a championship with Ottawa and then you know think back to Ricky Ray near the end of his career when when people were saying oh Ricky Ray is getting kind of old he moves to Toronto and the 100th Grey Cup leads that team to a championship I mean they know the game and and here's the other thing about Bo Bo has an edge on him mm -hmm. now Bo has uh confidence boarding bordering on arrogance and I think you need that as a quarterback first of all Kent Austin was a lot like that as you know and he you know because of that he wants to go out more on his terms very few players go out on their own terms he wants to go out on his terms which is another championship show Calgary they made a mistake and then walk away on your own on your own timeline yeah, and uh, something Coach Steinar pointed out on Monday after the announcement was uh, he was impressed with how well he handled that situation uh, being replaced by Jake Mayer as the uh, the starter. All right, let's talk about this game on Sunday. What are the Toronto Argonauts going to have to do to to deny the three-peats of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? Well, one of the big stories, and I, I haven't heard any new news today just yet, but uh, I'm sure it'll be trickling in, is the health of Zach Kolaris. Mm. Um, you know, I know he didn't show any limp or any boot or anything on his foot or leg or knee when he got off the plane here in Regina and everybody was all eyes on how he was walking down the stairs of the plane <laughs> to see if there was any limp at all. And there wasn't. So people are saying, ah, it doesn't look like it's anything. And, and Zach saying, well, it doesn't look like it's anything. And he said after the game, I'm fine. Yeah. 
having said all that, I expect them to do that. And I went back and looked at the injury. It's not nothing. I'm just, I've seen too many of the, of the legs plant in the turf and twist the way he twisted and then limp out. I don't think that was theatrics. I don't think that he was trying to play mental mind games with, you know, the opponent from the East final from, from the Argos. He wasn't doing any of that. He, he went to try and finish that game. It was a one possession game at the time. And he went on the field to try and finish it and couldn't do it. Hmm. So I don't think we've heard it all in that story. I don't know any inside information. I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> I just looked at that injury and went, uh, I don't think it's nothing. So that that's something we got to see because that'll change. He's been most dangerous outside the pocket in scramble rules. His, his receivers find holes, and when he gets outside and runs around and makes plays, that's where he's really excelled this year. So uh, if he's limited in that regard, that plays into Toronto's uh, hands a little bit because the Argos have a really good D-line. They're physical defense. Mm -hmm. They can match up against Brady Oliveira and the run game and that old line in Winnipeg. I think that's almost, I, let me say, I won't say it's a soft, but they're better, excuse me, they're better equipped to take on the Winnipeg old line than an undersized BC Lion D line was in the West final. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Gray Cup on the uh, on the uh, uh, the Toronto Argonauts in in uh, Garrett Davis playing in his sixth the Gray Cup with his third <laughs> yeah. different team uh, and, and the linebacker crew again I mean that was a unit of the the that had a lot of success for this uh, this Toronto Argonauts team and I I guess the bigger picture on the Argos do you think they're flying under the radar because they were the beast of the East or how, how do you look at the Argos this year? Yeah, I think they are kind of flying under the radar. I haven't covered them as much as Wayne Ford has for, for TSN. So I'm sort of catching up on a lot of their games and looking back at them. But what I see is a very physical defense, a, a defense that creates turnovers because they're physical. Um, you know, having Andrew Harris back in that one-two combination with Ouellette and, and, and Andrew Harris, I think, is, is dynamite. And McLeod Bethel-Thompson – has always been the up and down roller coaster quarterback since he's arrived in the CFL. Well, he wasn't that this year. This year, he was the most consistent I've ever seen him. And he went and won a real tough playoff game. I mean, he, he played a very good opponent, an opponent that was also on a roll. And he made more than enough plays to show that he is capable of winning the big game. And so you know, when you put all that together, I don't know how much the Bombers will be favored. They should be favored, yeah. but I don't know by how much because of that Toronto physicality on defense and McLeod Bethel Thompson's best year. Well, and Zach Caleros, we, we don't know the stats. Everybody will be watching him under a microscope this week. Uh, what other yeah. matchups are you watching? You mentioned the D-line of the Argos against Zach Caleros, but what, what other matchups on the football field do you think this game is going to come down to? Yeah, like, I, you know, I've been looking at stats of, of what is the difference between the winning teams and playoff football going back to last year and this year and the teams that don't win in advance in playoff football because it's different. It's a different time mm -hmm. of year. You know, the, the line of scrimmage is so important and the physicality of it and winning the line and especially in bad weather, it's going to be cold out. Mm -hmm. And what I've found, and Steve Daniel from the league office helped me with this, is that the winning teams in playoff football rush the ball effectively. So that's where I'm starting. I, I think there's two good quarterbacks, obviously. There's an MOP candidate, probably a front runner here in, in Zach Kolaris. But um, if, if there's another you know, so aspect of this game that we talk about all the time, but I think it's more prominent now because of weather conditions and just – going out and, and establishing your physical presence on the line of scrimmage. And so both teams have good run games. Both teams have good old lines that can, that can get the job done. So that's where I'm watching the matchup. D-line against O-line, you know, Brady Oliveira against his old friend and teammate, Andrew Harris. That is the number one storyline going in. I really think so.
Uh, it's a big week, obviously, across the CFL. It's a big week for you, too, Suits. Uh, you'll be inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame reporters wing at the uh, Football Reporters of Canada. I believe it's the breakfast, I think, is uh, is when yes. that uh, will happen. Uh, it's, what does that mean to you? Uh, you look at the list of names. I, I'm fortunate to get to see the list of names almost every day on the seventh floor at Tim Hortons Field. I'm, I'm going to be very proud to see your name up there. But what does it mean to you uh, to be inducted? Yeah, it's it's sort of surreal. It has been all season when I, you know, occasionally on the plane, we'll think about, you know, the Don Whitmans and the Chris Cuthberts and uh, the Terry Jones and just all the names of of great storytellers that have promoted and had passion for our league, even at times when they have written articles that had to be written that weren't exactly flattering because the league has kicked it around a little bit. Um, you know, but when I, I think about that, it is surreal to think that my name will be added to that. But when I got the call, the first thought to me was that I got a chance to represent all of our crew members. So there's going to be 75 to 100 crew members. And you know how this works. I mean, every single job is crucially important to the success of the presentation of the of the league. And that means the sound guys, the cable guys, the directors and producers and ISO and switchers and all the all the cameramen that will be out there in minus 15 or whatever it will be on game day. You know, I get a chance to stand on that stage that on Sunday morning and represent each and every one of them, because I, I really believe that if if we if there is one renegade guy who goes on his own or girl the show doesn't look as good. The show will not be successful. So we all have to work together. Every job is equally important. And that's what I want to talk about on the morning. I I know that I have to be quick because most of that room is going to be hung over. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah. What's, what's the beer of choice in the football reporters of Canada this year? I know it was uh, usually changes, but uh, yeah, that, that, those, those guys uh, always a ton of fun and uh, suits. It's well-earned. It's well-deserved. Uh, unfortunately I won't be there, uh, this year, but, uh, great cups coming back to Hamilton in 2023. Yeah. I uh, can't wait to celebrate, uh, with you then and, uh, enjoy the week suits. Thank you, Louie. Appreciate it, man. And great job all year covering the game that we all love. Really appreciate, appreciate that. It. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Okay. My thanks to Glenn Suter for joining me today. And, uh, you can catch him on the call alongside Rod Smith on TSN for the call of the 109th great cup happening on Sunday. We still have more from Regina as we continue the rest of the week. Hopefully you'll join us tomorrow on a brand new episode of Tie Cats today. From all of us here at the Tie Cats Audio Network, I'm Louie Butko. Hoping you have a great day. Tie Cats today can be heard every weekday and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.